morning. We're here from the State Emergency Operations Center. I'm joined with Florida Division of Emergency Management Director Kevin Guthrie, Florida Wildlife and Conservation Commission Director Roger Young, FEMA Administrator Deanne Criswell, Florida State Guard Director Mark Themey, and Major General John Haas from the Florida National Guard. Around 8.30 last night, Milton, Hurricane Milton made landfall near Siesta Key in Sarasota County. It moved quickly across central Florida overnight, producing significant flooding and damaging winds near its path. Uh, the storm did bring much destruction and damage. Tornadoes ravaged parts of the east coast of the state. Flooding occurred on the west and east coast, and strong winds lashed the state, especially in Pinellas, Hillsboro, Manatee, and Sarasota counties. Over the last 24 hours, heavy rainfall totals upwards of 10 to 15 inches has been observed across much of the Tampa Bay area, Nature Coast, and spreading eastward along north of I-4 corridor towards Sanford. Isolated pockets of up to 18 inches of rainfall were observed in Pinellas and coastal Hillsborough counties. Five to 10 inches of rainfall has been observed further northward towards Gainesville along eastern portions of the I-4 corridor and south of the western I-4 corridor towards Sarasota. Several rivers reach major flood stage and major flooding continues along portions of the Hillsborough River, St. Johns River, and Little Wakaiva River. Water levels are forecast to continue rising along northeast and west central Florida rivers and waterways with many forecasts to remain within or reach moderate to flood stage over the next day or so. Uh, we had over 80,000 people that were into shelters overnight as the storm hit the state. Uh, we will better understand the extent of the damage as the day progresses. Uh, and you have people that are out there assessing damage right now. First responders have been working all through the night to help people who were in distress. And what we can say is the storm was significant, but thankfully this was not the worst case scenario. The storm did weaken before landfall and the storm surge as initially reported has not been as significant overall as what was observed for Hurricane Helene. Right now, it looks like Sarasota County had the most significant storm surge, uh, likely somewhere between 8 to 10 feet. And remember, with Helene, we had 15 to 20 feet up in Taylor County. Rescue missions have been un underway throughout the night. State search and rescue teams report at least 48 individuals have been rescued as of 0630. National Guard search and rescue teams have worked overnight and successfully executed rescues of families and pets on the West Coast and from the destruction of the tornadoes uh, in, east, in the central and eastern parts of Florida. The Guard continues to work into the morning and have 31 rescue aircraft operational and hundreds of rescuers engaged in over 125 active missions in 26 different counties. Over 6,500 soldiers are deployed throughout the state. Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission has made land and water rescues in Pinellas, Hillsborough, and Pasco County. Uh, the State Guard has also been engaged in search and rescue, assisting with flood water evacuations as well as damage assessments. Uh, there are currently uh, 3.1 million uh, accounts without power. There have been 635,000 restorations since Hurricane Milton hit Florida. The areas that have the most significant outages as of this morning are Hillsboro, 75% out, Hardy, 97% out, Manatee, 82% out, Pinellas, 68% out, and Sarasota, 75% out. Of course, there are 50,000 plus linemen that have been pre-staged. Uh, a lot of what they'll do this morning is likely assess the damage uh, and then begin restoration uh, uh, operations very quickly and we appreciate everybody that's in that fight because that's very important for a lot of people. Cut and toss have begun at first light by the Florida Department of Transportation. 328 crews are active in the field with over 350 pieces of heavy equipment and trucks. 150 bridge inspectors were dispatched at first light and have begun performing inspections to open bridges across the impact areas. As I put in my executive order, uh, residents uh, you know, have a right to be back into their homes as soon as the roadways are deemed safe. In Tampa, the Gandhi Bridge and Howard Franklin Bridge have been inspected, cleared, and are open. And inspections of the Sunshine Skyway Bridge are underway. Um, the, there is debris on the Sunshine Skyway as well as the Courtney Campbell 
but once that debris is clear, we anticipate those bridges opening later this morning. Uh, other bridges are being opened as soon as the state inspections are completed. The Tampa Airport is repairing minimal damage and should be open no later than tomorrow. Seaports are awaiting Coast Guard Channel surveys to re reopen Waterside, but as of now, our initial assessments is they will likely be able to uh, resume operations uh, very quickly. Uh, we still have a lot of school closures for today. I think Floridians should just keep in contact with their, their local officials about what that's going to be. I would imagine a lot of the schools uh, that were not necessarily in the direct path of the storm will be open tomorrow. Uh, it may take a few more days for some of the places that were harder hit. Now, as you survey damage and clean up, please be cautious of hazards. We have post-storm fatalities almost every storm, and a lot of these fatalities are avoidable. So please be cautious of downed power lines. Don't touch them. Uh, don't remove tree debris that may be entangled with downed power lines. Standing water can conceal downed power lines and other hazards, so please be mindful and never walk through storm waters. Standing storm waters can also carry a bacteria that can lead to fatal infections. Uh, the, this type of infection was responsible for a fatality following Hurricane Helene, so please avoid wading through standing water. Please use proper ladder safety. Please use proper generator safety. Do not operate the generator inside your home. It must be outside a safe distance from doors and windows. Visit Florida's emergency accommodation modules on Expedia and Priceline will remain available for those who are returning to their homes which were evacuated during the storm and sustained damage uh, or, um, or in need of other type of shelter. So these models will continue to provide real-time hotel availability and lodging resources, making the experience easier for users. If traffic lights are out in your area, please drive with caution and treat each light as you would a four-way stop. Uh, and also remember, if you're going to use a chainsaw, be very careful with that. We have mishaps on that after every storm. We are extending the Hope Florida line for another two weeks at 24 hours, seven days a week. So if you need assistance or resources post-storm, you can call 1-833-GET-HOPE, 1-833-GET-HOPE. Hope Florida's disaster arm, Activate Hope, is a program designed to help people find help following a disaster such as a hurricane. Uh, so you can call the HOPE line. You can also visit the HOPE bus, which will uh, be in some of these areas very soon, and there'll be announcements about that. Florida Commerce and the State Emergency Response Team activated the Business Damage Assessment Survey in response to Hurricane Milton. Business owners can self-report physical and economic damage caused by the storm. Businesses complete, can complete the survey online at floridadisaster.biz, floridadisaster.biz. Florida Commerce has also activated the Small Business Emergency Bridge Loan Program. We have $50 million available to Florida small businesses, and it's a zero-interest loan, very flexible repayment options. Uh, you can apply for loans of up to $50,000 through the program. Uh, loans of up to 100000 are available for agriculture and aquaculture small businesses, and loans of 150000 are available for citrus and cattle operations. Again, these are short-term zero-interest loan. You get the cash in your hand. Uh, the repayment terms are, are very flexible. You can apply at www.floridajobs.org slash EBL, floridajobs.org slash EBL. We've also activated the Florida Disaster Fund for those who want to make uh, tax-deductible charitable contributions that will be used to be able to help Floridians who are in need. And you can go to floridadisasterfund.org, floridadisasterfund.org, if you have any questions. Uh, We're going to continue to uh, support all remaining rescue missions that are, that are underway and that may ne be needed in the near future. Uh, we'll also continue to assess the damage that was done fr from the storm. Uh, we also anticipate that because of the amount of water, you know, you may see uh, flooding uh, happen not just now, but, but in the uh, subsequent days. But I think everybody responded very quickly. Uh, I'm proud of everybody's hard work. Uh, we got more work to do, but uh, we, will, we will absolutely get through this. Okay, Kevin Guthrie.
Good morning, everyone. Governor, thank you for your leadership uh, time and time again. I know you and the uh, state emergency response team will lead the charge as we respond to rec and recover from this storm. Hurricane Milton officially made landfall. As you heard the governor say, the impacts from the storm are still being felt across north and east central Florida, even right now as that last banding train of rain starts to move offshore. Please, especially if you're in the areas, um, if you're in those areas of northeast Florida, the east uh, race coast, space coast, please make sure you're sheltering in place until officials determine it is safe for you to leave. In the first 72 hours after a storm, there is a parallel effort to search, secure, and stabilize the area. As search and rescue missions continue in response to Milton, please do not go out and visit the impacted areas. You will be inhibiting first responders by doing so. Right now, we need those roadways clear for electrical crews, fire crews, EMS crews, urban search and rescue crews. We have 20-something urban search and rescue teams that will move into the area and do a door-by-door -door search. Even though, as you heard the governor say, this was not the worst case scenario, we still had damage. And we're gonna need to get out there and go door to door and make sure that everyone is okay. So please stay off the road. Listen to your local authorities for updates on when it is safe to go outside and when it is safe for you to return to your homes. I know a lot of people evacuated and we appreciate that. Do not be in a hurry. Check in with your local emergency management agency, your local sheriff's offices, to see if they are posting anything on if it's safe to return home. Please make sure you do that. Again, as the governor said, we're gonna open up roads and bridges so that you can do so, but there may be extenuating circumstances in the neighborhood level. So please make sure you're checking before you come back home. Major flooding continues along the Hillsborough, St. John's and Little Wakiva rivers. I wanna take just a moment and just talk about, there is gonna be another phase to this particular incident. And that is very similar to Hurricane Ian. Uh, we have a lot of rain that has fallen over the central portion of Florida. The St. John's River Basin that comes down into Seminole County, Brevard, portions of Brevard, portions of Volusia County, and on up the St. John's River. Those headwaters have experienced a lot of rainfall. That river takes about 45 days to completely flush itself out to the Atlantic Ocean. So what we're gonna be seeing first is impacts down in the Seminole County and surrounding county area. And then you'll see that move up into Palaka, Wielaka, and then on up into uh, St. John's, Flagler, Clay, Duval counties. So that's gonna be a long-term effort when it comes to making sure that people are monitoring the situation on the St. John's River, as well as the ones that I mentioned, Hillsborough and the Little Wakiva. Some roadways are flooded which is not a safe situation for anyone, please do not attempt to walk or drive through floodwaters. Accidents due to floodwaters are 100% preventable. All you gotta do is turn around. If you're sheltered in place or when you return to your home and you're looking at the damages around your home right now, do one thing for us. Take out your phone, take some pictures, inside and outside, all four sides of the house, every room inside the house, what are things that you should be documenting? Make sure you're documenting just the physical damages, but then also since this was a flooding event, we wanna make sure that you uh, capture those what we call high water marks on your home. Do that inside and outside. For a point of reference, when you're on the outside of the home, make sure you get like the doorknob of the outdoor house. That'll give us a reference, a point of reference on how high that water got. If you're on the inside, make sure you have like an electrical socket or a light switch or again a door handle on the inside of your home in the picture so that we can get some type of reference as to how high that water is coming. If you're beginning the cleanup process, please ensure you're wearing the appropriate safety gear. Do not attempt to clean up hazardous debris or down power lines as the governor has said. Report all of that to your local authorities. Do not cut any lines. Again, we do not need Florida man and Florida woman out there cutting random lines uh, as they go. You don't know what is a cable line, you don't know what is an electrical line, and probably more importantly these days is you don't know what is a fiber optic line. Most of our 911 lines run across fiber optic. We do not want anybody cutting lines. Let the professionals come in here and identify what it is before it's cut. Remember, again, some roads are still dangerous due to flooding, debris, and potential down lines. Do not risk it, let our crews get out there and get everything back up and running. For assistance after the storm, call State Assistance Information Line. Again, that's information only, 1-800-342-3557.
Help is available in English, Spanish, and Haitian Creole. FloridaDisaster.org slash updates for information on the web. And then, of course, follow us on at I'm sorry, follow us at F-L-S-E-R-T on X and Instagram and Facebook at F-D-E-M. That is the most trusted and fastest source that we have. We have uh, several people helping us out on posting on social media, so that is going to be the best place and the fastest place to get stuff from us. Thank you, Governor DeSantis, again, as together we will overcome the storm. Okay. Roger. Morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Governor DeSantis, for reestablishing and resourcing this state guard so we can deliver critical emergency response capabilities right to the point of need. Working alongside Director Guthrie's General Haas and Director Young's and the rest of his state agencies, personnel moving rapidly in order to save lives, rescue our citizens, and minimize human suffering. Throughout the night and this morning, our special missions unit with search and rescue, K-9, paramedic, and swift water rescue teams moved throughout the most severely impacted areas between Pasco and Sarasota counties, working with local authorities to provide on-water and overland search and rescue and route assessment capabilities. Our maritime unit is also engaged with FWC with 10 boat teams and high water vehicle teams in order to expand the capacity of the local counties abilities to conduct waterborne reconnaissance and search and rescue operations. Our aviation unit with Black Hawks and drones with live stream and 3D map rendering capabilities will be conducting air operations today in coastal and inland community areas in order to enable those local authorities to paint the picture and focus their resources. Ladies and gentlemen, we are laser focused on search and rescue operations today. Good morning, everyone, and I'd like to also thank Governor DeSantis for his unwavering support during these times of critical need. Uh, we are fortunate and blessed to live in a state where the governor has such support for state agencies that put Floridians first. Um, I want to also thank uh, DEM Director Kevin Guthrie for his outstanding leadership and support and his DEM team for their coordination and communication with all state agencies, making us the leading nation, leading leaders in the nation for emergency response. We're privileged and honored to be a part of that team. Responding to hurricanes and natural disasters is what we do. As FWC officers, we have unique equipment, training, and support from Governor DeSantis and Director Guthrie to be able to provide immediate support in the wake of natural disasters and hurricanes. This is through the use of specialized equipment like shallow draft boats, air boats, swamp buggies, and other, th and other equipment to provide high water rescues. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. We have deployed 135 officers teamed up with the Florida State Guard the Division of Finance Services Cut Teams, Florida Ag Law, the Florida National Guard, and the Miccosukee Tribe Law Enforcement, and local sheriff's offices up and down the coast and across the state um, to provide search and rescue efforts to those in greatest need. Teams with these specialized equipment for search and rescue across the state are hard at work right now. Our search and rescue efforts are ongoing, and so far this morning we've reported over 42 rescues uh, in several counties. In Pinellas County, we've had so far seven land rescues, three water rescues, several welfare checks. There were two arrested for looting for battery on LEO uh, with our teams in the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, uh, and 21 rescued from an apartment building. Uh, these rescues started yesterday in the wake of the tornadoes. We had seven local FWC officers respond to a tornado event where they rescued six and evacuated four, um, or evacuated by four by four vehicles, and also conducted 30 welfare checks. In Pasco County, operations are ongoing, uh, responding to multiple intersections, clearing trees and debris, uh, allowing emergency vehicles to access storm-damaged areas, and responding to calls for service. Uh, in Hillsborough County, uh, there are several people arrest, uh, assisted from a vehicle in a ditch, one pulled from a flooded vehicle, uh, three individuals from, removed from a flooded apartment, and then there was another 100 evacuated at an assisted living facility and another 20 evacuated from a senior list uh, facility in Tampa. Um, so again, these efforts are ongoing. They're ongoing across the state. Like Director Guthrie said, there is going to be flooding events across the state in central and no northern Florida. So please be aware, if you're in a flood-prone area, be aware of this. Our teams will be able to respond and alert all through the state um, throughout this time. So again, I want to thank Governor DeSantis for his leadership and support, 
and uh, FWC is here to work with our partners to make sure that uh, the Floridians are safe during this event. Thank you. So we'll continue with the um, uh, rescue operations as needed. There's a lot of damage assessments that are going to be going on today, and uh, we're very obviously supportive of the power restoration operations. We're glad that all those folks were staged. Uh, and then also just to uh, ensuring that fuel is flowing. Uh, hopefully we get our gas stations and big box stores and everything open very quickly. I, I'd imagine that that, that that will likely happen and uh, just get people uh, back on their feet. And that's, that's going to be our focus. Okay, any questions? Well, Pinellas County, it's my understanding that deputies there are restricting access into the area. I don't know if you have any insights into that or... I don't. I mean, you know, we're going to open the bridges. Uh, I know a couple of them are open. The other two, there's going to be debris that are going to be removed, um, and those bridges will be will be open for traffic, and uh, you know Floridians can use those as they see fit. Yep. Not yet. I mean, I know there have been reports. We have not confirmed any. That does not mean there has not been any. There's a process where this happens with the state. Uh, I know with the tornadoes, it seems very likely that there were that there were some with the tornadoes. Uh, that's the only reports we've received. No confirmations. I imagine there's going to be some confirmations, uh, but it's too soon to tell with uh, respect to the um, the West Coast and the storm surge and 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 everything. So so stay tuned on that. Storm. Some Wall Street analysts predicted that Milton's losses could exceed fifty billion dollars. Does the state have any sort of how the hell would a Wall Street analyst be able to know? It's been dark all day. What, you just going to know that you're going to do? I mean, like, give me a break on some of this stuff. They're doing damage assessments now. They always say this or that or whatever. I mean, what I would say is what I said in the original um, uh, talkers. We had certain worst-case scenarios in terms of going into Tampa Bay. A lot of places in Pinellas County, and they had negative storm surge because the, it, it sucked the water out of the bay. So in terms of all that, where you'd see the entire Tampa Bay area underwater, that did not happen. The storm surge, and uh, it was most acute in Sarasota. And I think it was a little bit more than Sarasota got for, for Helene, but it wasn't like so much more. I think it was 8 to 10 feet. Um, Helene, of course, got almost to 20 in Taylor County. Uh, and then I think the fact that the storm weakened, uh, I think most of, I mean, I'm not saying there's not going to be damage. There will be a cut across the state in a way that Helene did not. Um, but in terms of just right now, the, the morning after, if I think back to like Hurricane Ian, I don't think that you're looking at similar amount of damage to Ian. And then with Helene, there, there may end up being more overall damage. There may not. I don't know. But definitely the surge did not reach Helene levels. I mean, Helene was, was producing major surge all across the west coast of Florida, and then in the Big Bend, it was just uh, biblical. Uh, that was not necessarily what we have in here. Anything north of the storm had minimal surge on the west coast, and it was really kind of that Sarasota, Charlotte Harbor, down into Lee, Collier, um, but compared to what they had with Hurricane Ian, uh, that, that, that is not um, on the same level. So, so we'll see. Uh, there'll be a lot more that will need to be done to assess uh, the, the extent of the damage. But what I think I, we can say is you know, we have a, a lot of resources in play here in Florida to be able to uh, mitigate and get people back on their feet and get the state moving again. I think that's what people want. They want to get back in their homes. They want to see uh, the, the roads clear. They want to see the bridges reopen. And so that's what our sole focus so that we get people back. The areas, Tropic Winfield, Hertz Roof, um, Shattered. Um, it's my understanding that they were relocated on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, they were relocated. So, I mean, the Tropicana Field is a routine staging area for these things. The the roof on that is not rated for, I think it's rated for 110 miles an hour. Uh, and so, you know, the forecast changes. But as it became clear that there was going to be something of that magnitude that's going to that was going to be within the distance, they um, they redeployed them out of Tropicana. So there were no state assets that were in Tropicana Field. I think Duke also removed all their assets as well. Um, and you know, you look. I mean, the roof is basically it's like it's like a fabric almost uh, with that. So so that was uh, something that that we understood and uh, and acted accordingly. They were moved before the storm. I mean, and, you know, so there was no um, no issue with anything uh, with that. Your main break in St. Petersburg. My understanding is, like, at least earlier this morning, the city had no access. Kevin can talk about that. I know he's been uh, 
engaged in that. Yep. <clears throat> so about 1.40 this morning, uh, I received a phone call, um, woke up, got over here from that building to this building, um, got over here and started working the issue. Uh, right now, there are um, several water main breaks throughout uh, Pinellas County, uh, different water systems, some are municipal, some are county. Uh, but what they're doing is they're slowly raising pressure in those uh, lines to actually figure out exactly where the brakes are at. And they're going to start repairing those brakes one by one by one. You may start to see um, some things come out of the hospital industry. We have stabilized the hospital situation. Uh, there is one active evacuation of a hospital right now. I do not have the name of that hospital. Uh, we can certainly get that back to you through our, our, our folks. But uh, we have stabilized the water pressure in uh, four out of five hospitals from getting any worse. So we're going to continue to closely monitor that throughout the day. Uh, but again, one active evacuation going on, um, but we have stabilized. We have water tankers on site pushing pressure back into the uh, in, into the systems. But, you know, the, our, our, I think our biggest thing to talk about, or I shouldn't say talk about, but the biggest thing right now in that Pinellas, St. Pete area is going to be the water system, but we're working in conjunction to see how we can support and supplement the cities and the county on what uh, resources they need. We have, we've already dispatched logistical folks into the area. We've uh, uh, sent in engineers um, on our dime to be as helpful as we can. In one situation, it may be a gasket or a flange. In another situation, it may be a complete water main break. But we stand by ready to support Pinellas and St. Pete and other municipalities to help them get that water back on and running because, again, power and water are right there together. We got to, we can we can do a lot with power, but we got to have water. Are you aware of any uh, impacts to the sorry the Kinder Morgan Central Florida pipeline system? Jason, I, I I don't have anything on that particular pipeline system, but I'll I'll find out what I can offline and uh we'll we'll close the loop back with you guys. All right. Sorry, um, will that impact any of the post storm recovery efforts given no. that they're in Jacksonville? No, well, they're not in ja – I mean, there, there's some came from Jacksonville originally. They, Kevin put them in different places to just ride out the storm and then come back in. So, no, it's not going to have it's not going to have any major impacts at all. Um, these are just things you, you've got to do. I mean, you know, you stage and you, you figure out kind of how to, how to go. Um, they were staged during Helene there, and it worked well. When the forecast said that it may not uh, make it through with the roof, then they, um, then they adjusted accordingly. But they're in the fight, and they'll continue to do it. Okay, thanks.